Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of People of Middlebury. My name is Hurry Ephraim and today's guest we have James Sun. James, thank you so much for coming on our thank show. Thank you for inviting it's me. It's a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, James is named as Canada's top 20 under 20. And on top of that, he's the recipient of the Queen Elizabeth Second Diamond Jubilee for significant contributions to the Canadian community. It is an honor to have him on our show. So, but before that though, uh, before we discuss any of this, and of course you have more, many more accomplishments, we have to start with generics, you know? Yeah. Back to orientation, throwback. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you from? I uh, was born in Beijing, China, mm -hmm. lived there for nine years, yeah. and then went to Canada, uh -huh. lived there for nine years, and then came here for college. So I half and half, now you're here. Yep, you got it. That's born Hopefully nine America. years in the U.S. as well. <laughs> uh, of course, you get America. Um, so James, a lot of people kind of associate you with uh, business because of your many accomplishments in various types of business settings. And one of them being DECA. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, please give us some insight on what DECA is and how it has you know, impacted you or how you've impacted it too. Absolutely. So I started DECA mm -hmm. in grade nine. Mm -hmm. Still, to talk about DECA, I have mm -hmm. to go a little bit back into around when I first came to Canada. Ah, <laughs> Not a little it. bit back, it's a long time okay. back. But when I first came to Canada, I didn't mm -hmm. speak a word of English. Mm -hmm. um, my mom thought it would be better to study English in the in North America mm -hmm. as opposed to China, so I don't have an accent. I see. I see. Um, so I came here, mm -hmm. didn't have any friends because I couldn't speak one word of English. Mm -hmm. So I resorted to video games. I, see. I was a, uh, a video game addict. Play played it for probably five six hours every single day. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Um, super socially awkward kid, and mm. I can talk about the only conversations I can hold is about video games. What did you play last? What game? Uh, Maple Story. Maple Story. I don't know if uh, the audience knows, but you know, I'm not even familiar. Oh, uh, but it's this, this online RPG. I uh -huh. basically learned a lot of my English through video games. I okay. played a lot of online games. Mm -hmm. um, so when in grade, so in grade seven, grade eight, around there, um, I met this other kind of socially awkward kid who's mm -hmm. just like me, but he was absolutely brilliant in the mind. Um, and he sort of served as a role model that mm. inspired me to, to work harder in school. I see. And so that happened. And in grade nine, I went to you know, high school. By that time, my academics were up, but I still haven't done much extracurriculars. I see. And so I decided to try this thing called DECA. I see. What DECA is essentially, it's a, a case study competition. Mm -hmm. And so almost like consulting, you're given a business problem that you have mm -hmm. to solve. You have 15 minutes to look at it and 15 minutes to solve it. Yeah, so okay. in grade nine, Participated in it, mm -hmm. absolutely failed. Really? Uh, yeah, I got I got 60 in the regional level, and you know, rarely do anyone not pass the regional level. And so I was oh, one of the right. one of the outliers who just absolutely got annihilated. Uh -huh. I think it was not even it was 60 for my oral case study, okay. and probably like 55 for the written test. So it's, okay. there's a written portion too. There's a written and an oral portion. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a multiple choice, 100, 100 question, multiple mm -hmm. choice exam. Okay. So um, you weren't happy with your performance, so what did you do the next year? Uh, great question. So next year, I uh, did it again. Mm -hmm. Did a lot better. I think I got second in Ontario. Oh, wow. that's, that's a huge turnaround. Yeah, yeah, okay. a huge turnaround. Worked really hard for it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it paid off. Paid off, mm -hmm. paid off. I wanted to go to internationals. I, I qualified for internationals, uh -huh. but uh, I was actually that year invited to go speak at the Canadian Business Hall of Fame induction gala as part of my involvement with, um, with Junior Achievement. Oh. Yeah, so I had a chance to speak to a group of about 3,500 business executives mm -hmm. who ranged from um, Aldo Balsadon, who's the founder of the Aldo Shoes, um, okay. P uh, Guy La Liberté, who, is, who was the founder of Cirque du Soleil, and oh, was... Wow. So so a lot of important people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was, and so you skipped that, so you did that instead of going to the DECA Internationals, right? Right, 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 exactly. Did you get a chance to like pursue the DECA some more after that? Or? Yeah, so the year afterwards, I actually did DECA again. Okay. Um, this time, I got second in the world for my category. In the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite a lot of luck, a lot of luck, I have to tell you that. <laughs> yeah, hard work, too. I'd yeah, to hard work and a lot. Um, yeah, so I, I thought that my, my path, by the end of grade 11 year, mm. I thought sort of my involvement with DECA has been really life changing. I, see. I, I, wanna, I wanted this opportunity to do something and give this opportunity to more people, mm -hmm. extend it to more young people around mm -hmm. Canada and around, around Ontario. Mm -hmm. And so I got fortunately elected as the president of DECA Ontario, which is an organization of, I think at, at that time, 9,000 people in over 200 schools. 
And so, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of schools. Really fascinating opportunity. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was that cool. cool. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, but you just now you just mentioned something about junior achievement. Can you give me a little bit of what is junior achievement? I've never really heard yeah. Of it so junior achievement is an international organization and mm -hmm. it is Canada's largest youth educational nonprofit. Okay. What do they teach students? Yeah. Um. So what they teach students is they have these four months programs called mm -hmm. the company program. Okay. And so they put a lot of students together and help them start up a business under the sponsorship of companies like Deloitte, Daniel Life, you know, the big names in consulting, banking. Oh, so this is this is working on a huge scale then basically. Yeah. So it's not, yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing, that's amazing. So you were able to participate in that when? Did you start your freshman year as well? Yeah, I started my freshman year. Okay. I once again failed miserably. Great tenure, came back, did a lot better. I can see a trend here, you know, failing terribly. And so 10th grade was like a very like, it's a coming back uh, from the failures. From it's the bottom. Started from the bottom. Yeah, no, we're here. Okay. Kind of, very relevant Drake reference. I see. Um, and so, uh, did very well. I was invited to to that that gala. Mm -hmm. um, had a great speech. Able to speak just by your second year. Yeah, um, that's yeah. It's very very impressive. Mm -hmm. And so, continuing on, like, what did you do after after that speech? Yeah. So I, so. You know, coming from that background of mm -hmm. being a video game addict, mm -hmm. I really adopted the philosophy that if you give any young person mm -hmm. the, the resources, the mentorship, mm -hmm. and the tools, regardless of where they are in their background mm -hmm. or where you think they will be in 10 years or 15 years, mm -hmm. I think if you provide them with that platform and the support, they will achieve their potential and really make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that opportunity to do that with Junior Achievement. Mm -hmm. And so I created this ambassador network called National Ambassador Youth Network. And what it was, was a bunch of young people like myself mm -hmm. and who were really looking for an opportunity to also inspire their peers, to really create a generation of entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs who are gonna make a difference in this world and create jobs for the economy. Um, and so we worked together and I worked with the, the National Director of Volunteer Services and created this organization that allowed students to shape the educational curriculum that impacted the other students. So, so the same students are involved to change the curriculum for themselves. Too. Yeah, for the I next see. year's future generation. I see. So you so have it's like a learn by doing kind of system. Maybe. Exactly. Okay. So you have these top students who are making it better every single year, and we also assist with fundraising. So in total, we represent about two hundred and twenty-three thousand students across Canada, and we've had over one million dollars in financial impact. So. It's definitely one of those things I'm, I'm pretty proud of and something that I could not have done without mm. the support of all the teammates and my mentors and, and all the people in my life. That's, that's really amazing, dude. Um, yeah, it's, that's really sad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, here you are at my age, already accomplished more than like, even like an average 50 year old. It's really amazing. Thank you. Um, and on top of that, I know you've created a lot of your own startups and we had a chance to talk about it beforehand. We're very, very impressive. I think one of them got like, Eighty thousand dollars in sale. Your very first one, I think, your very first legit one, mm -hmm. and you had a second one beforehand too, like it's a, a, an SSAT kind of practice thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's also doing very well too, from what I hear. But I think what I definitely want to talk about some more though is um, the the nonprofit that you have here at home, yeah. here at Middlebury, just from your like six, seven months here in yeah. college, kind of very amazing. Um, can you talk to us about it? What is it about? Yeah. So what it's called is called Empower with Code. And oh, so, I like I said, as, as a kid, I was mm. hugely addicted to video games. Mm. And I, but then technology is also something huge that could be used. I mean, I thought about my passion of playing yeah. video games. I mean, mm -hmm. I think a lot of kids today have that passion of technology because mm. they live around it. Right. So how do we turn that passion to something that can teach them something? Okay. And so um, essentially what I did is I found a lot of college students mm. who were interested in computer science or right. our computer science majors. Mm. And I paired them up with local high school kids who mm. are high school and middle schoolers who are, let's just say, more disadvantaged. And so we work with them, and through four months, through coding and mentorship, really teach them the basic problem-solving skills, the applicable skill of programming, and really just giving them, like I said earlier, the tools and the mentorship and the support for them to really achieve their potential that they didn't even know existed. Um, and so I work with, I think, four or five mentors from the college, and we work with a group of 12 kids, and we're fortunate enough to be funded by the Center for Social Entrepreneurship as well as ah, Summer okay. Fellows and also the Resolution Project, which is a fellowship I won at the Clinton Global Initiative in Arizona. For the same project, right? Yep. That's amazing, yeah. That's really that's really, really cool. So 
Uh, I know I'm sure some people will be really interested to, to participate in this, mm -hmm. but of course it's the end of the year, I'm sure things yeah. are going to wrap up. Uh, but for next year, anybody who's interested in next year, who's their contact person, how do they, how do they get involved, basically? Yeah, uh, so there's this person named Patrick Tang. Patrick Tang, okay. Patrick Tang, a great friend of mine, mm -hmm. also a mentor, who is a fellow a student here, fellow right? student here okay. um, who's been involved with the program ever since its inception, mm -hmm. which is literally six months ago. But <laughs> yeah. um, he's been involved, and next year he'll actually be taking the project over. I see. Um, and what it is, essentially, he is just going to be manning the project, leading mm -hmm. the mentorship and all that. And so I think any audience who are watching this show right now, they want to get in touch, they should email him at ptang, P-T-A-N-G, at middlebury.edu. That's great. So anybody who's interested in CompSite, was it doing CompSite, or was I had any experience with coding, yeah. is welcome, right? Absolutely. That's great. That's great, guys. So you heard it here. Email ptang at middlebury.edu if you want to get involved with James' project, Empower with Code. And uh, thank you so much for watching the show. And James, of course, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. You're an inspiration. Good luck with you. Thank you, Ray. Thank, thank you. you. It's a great show. Anyway, anyway.